Hello everyone and welcome to our tutorial for setting up the crankshaft on your own hardware. In case you haven't seen the original what is crankshaft video, link is above and in the description below. Alright, let's check out how we set this up. Just like the original video, here is our parts list. So I bought this Raspberry Pi 3B, a USB cable for it, a car display mount, this 5 inch LCD touchscreen. Now the crankshaft said it's supposed to use a 7 inch touchscreen, but I wanted something a little bit smaller. As I built it as a non-permanent solution to Android Auto, I wanted something that I could repurpose later on without having to rebuy none of the display. I also purchased this 3.5 inch touchscreen that works on the GPIO pins for another project. I would highly suggest going with a display that is not the GPIO via HDMI because this has caused massive headaches with users. If you decide to buy that one, we'll go ahead and fix it later on. And whatever you do, do not forget an SD card. Just don't get one from AliExpress. Anything at least 8 gigabytes is good. And we've got all of this for the low, low price of around 70 to 75 USD, depending on sales, taxes, and shipping. But we don't have things like a microphone or an ambient light sensor, which you could go pick up while you're here for as little as a few dollars for the microphone and light sensor. Now I've not purchased either of these, so I'll not be integrating them into this build. Now that we wait a month for everything to arrive, that's everything here, put all aside. We don't need any of this for now. Let's get on with the tutorial and see what this OS has to offer. Alrighty, on your computer, go to the getcrankshaft.com website, hit download crankshaft, link in the description below. Scroll down till you see this crankshaft ng zip file and go ahead and download it. Now the bad thing about downloading the entire zip file is the fact that it actually downloads all of these files when technically we just need the IMG file. While that downloads, download any SD card ISO burn tool like Balena Etcher, Win32 Disk Imager, or Rufus. Once these are downloaded, go ahead, run Blaine Etcher, and plug in your SD card. Now there is one more step we have to do with that file. Open it up and extract this IMG file. We're gonna paste it on the desktop. Once that's completed, hit flash from file, select the location that your .img file is, select your target, which is gonna be your SD card. Make sure you select your SD card and not anything else. Hit select and when you know it's the IMG file, your specific SD card, it will format everything. So make sure that SD card is blank, hit flash, and wait for the entire process to run through. All right, so while this flashes to the SD card, we're gonna actually go ahead and start putting together our Raspberry Pi in screen, just so we have something to do while this thing flashes. Alrighty, take your Raspberry Pi and the entire screen. I built it together. Now this is a little janky. So my Raspberry Pi came with a case and I mounted the Raspberry Pi with the case to the back. And then I kind of just taped this case to the case to try to get it to sit. And then I put a magnetic backing on pretty much so like if I ever need to take the back off, I can just cut the tape and get to the Raspberry Pi. I would suggest putting a fan in here. So I still have to get one of those fans. And then the GPIO connectors are still free to put that fan there. I noticed when I was temperature monitoring that even just by blowing on it, it was just kicking the temperature down, which is really, really good. So the only bad thing about this is the SD card slots right there. All right, once it's done flashing, you can let it validate the files. We're not gonna do that. Should bring up two things. One's gonna be your boot, and the other one's gonna be the USB drive E. So here we can see that the boot partition is only using a few hundred megs and then a few gigs of that initial SD card. Now my SD card that I have is a 32 gig SD card. It's just the only one I had laying around. If you use anything greater than a four gig, you should be fine. But all this unallocated space, we can actually just use as extra storage on the crankshaft software. But we'll get into that later. That's somewhere you want to house anything you want to use when it's not connected to your phone. You can put like music or stuff like that later on. So here is our boot partition. Before we run the initial boot, we need to do two things. The order does not matter, but we need to create a .ssh file and find out where the crank nv config file is. On the main page, create a blank text file, name it .ssh, make sure that you have the extensions on. And then we have to go into the crankshaft file, and here's our configuration file. Here's where you can manually override anything you're having issues with. 
for example, if the GPIO connection is not working, but at the moment we don't need to change anything. Eject your SD card and let's plug it into the Raspberry Pi. Alrighty, and now that that's done, we can go ahead and plug her in. Now, the initial boot sequence is going to take a while, and that is because it has to go through the entire setup process of building the file system. Back on your computer, open up command prompt as an administrator. After you plug in your Raspberry Pi to the Ethernet, either use a Wi-Fi scanner or your router login page to find the device on the network. If you can't find the IP address, just type in SSH Pi at crankshaft ng, as that is the default name of the crankshaft ng software. Hit the enter button and it should be able to SSH in. And if it comes up, it'll tell you the IP address of it at the top. Now, if you're not able to find it, try with that Wi-Fi scanner to see if it's on the network. If not, try another ethernet cable and go from there. And just type in yes for adding the fingerprint and now we're on it. And the default password will be Raspberry. And now we are in the crankshaft-ng. Type in sudo app-get update and let it run its course. Once it's done, type in app-get upgrade and let that finish its course out. Type in yes. Now that it finished updating and that's mostly it for those with the ribbon cable screen, that's all you really need to do. Everything should be working from the start. You can go on with customizing the crankshaft, plugging that SD card back into your computer, and changing any one of the following images, things like the boot splash or the backgrounds. And remember that unformatted section of the SD card? We can actually format that now and add any music or files we want. For those who have the hat display with the HDMI, this is for you. Everyone else can skip to the timestamp on screen if you want. I have noticed that the touchscreen does not work right out of the gate and we have to install a few things. So let's run through that. Type in sudo shut down now. And we are shutting down the Raspberry Pi. Wait for it to shut all the way down. Once it's done, unplug the Raspberry Pi. Take out your SD card, plug it into your computer. In the boot, go to crankshaft, crankshaft and dot sh, open with notepad, change the dev mode equals zero to dev mode equals one, control s to save, and eject your SD card. This will prevent the crankshaft from booting into the OS, allowing us to modify the partition data. We should have done this from the start, but the updates technically still worked. Plug the SD card into the Raspberry Pi and power it on. And let's re-SSH into the crankshaft. Re-SSH into the Pi. Type in sudo rm-rf lcd-show. Then type in git clone github git tft slash lcd.git. If you're getting this, can't resolve host, perfectly fine. Just go to the github page of good tft lcd show, hit code, and just download the zip file. Now the only pain that happens with this is we're gonna have to shut down the Pi and put the zip file on the actual SD card. Unless you use something like FileZilla and do it that way, 
which technically we can do. So if you want, open up FileZilla, type in crankshaft.ng, pi, and then that Raspberry password. Hit yes. And now we are on the Raspberry Pi. Take that zip file we just downloaded, extract here, and here we have our folder. Now hop over to FileZilla and copy it onto the Raspberry Pi, extract it. Now that the folder is on, go back to our SSH, and here it is. CD into the LCD show master, and here's all of our files. Is this what it is? Sage modded r 755 lcd show now before we can move on, go into the crankshaft and G folder. It will be under boot CD crankshaft and then type in nano crankshaft and V under dot SH. Now it's going to say it's unwritable. Fix that just by doing sudo. Scroll down where it says dev mode equals one. Change that to equals zero. Now we can CD into that lcd show type in sudo period slash lcd double hit the tab key and then whatever size screen you have now i have a three and a half inch screen so i'm going to type in 35 dash show and then hit the enter button it's going to go ahead and reboot and touchscreen should be working now the reason we disabled the dev mode was so it to boot right into the crankshaft os and your touchscreen should be working if it's not Go ahead, try using the basic Raspbian with the drivers. And if that does not work, go ahead and try to return the screen. Maybe it's faulty. If you keep getting the Open Auto has crashed after installing the TFT touchscreen drivers, turns out there's no fix for this. If you go onto the GitHub page, you can see that multiple people are having that same issue. Alrighty, so I couldn't get the USB drives to work to put local storage on. So we're going to try with the internal storage. Change the partition that's here. Just delete it and reformat it. You don't have to name it CSS storage in all caps. But just to be safe, I would just do that. Go into it, make a music folder in all caps, and then put whatever music you want in that. Open up your boot, go to crankshaft, open crankshaft NV, and at the same time, open up your startup.sh. Now that we're here, scroll down and re-enable dev mode. You could actually start dev mode app so we can test some things, but that's actually perfectly fine. Hit save, eject your SD card, and let's get back to it. Plug your SD card back in, plug in your crankshaft to the internet again, and plug it back into the power. Now while this boots up, we can actually go ahead and open up our command prompt. And once it finishes booting up, we can actually SSH back into the crankshaft. All right, type in that default password of Raspberry, clear this out and type in LSBLK. Now here's our three partitions. We have the boot partition, the root partition, and that blank partition we just kind of made with our music installed. Technically right now, it's not mounted anywhere, which is why the crankshaft never sees this partition. So what we can do is we can type in sudo mount slash dev mmc blk 0p3 now yours might be 0p3 yours might be something else but this is the one we're going to want and then we're going to mount this at media mount this thing to my media now we can either make our changes inside the ssh by changing that crankshaft nv file and pasting that sudo mount into the startup.sh file or we can just shut the crankshaft down plug the raspberry pi plug the sd card back into the computer and just make the changes on the text files, hit save, and then let's see if they actually saved. We're going to SSH back in and reboot the Pi, just so we can take a look at everything. Just type in lsblk, and we can see that our partition is mounted at media slash my media, which is perfectly where we want it to boot every time with the startup. Type on music, and it doesn't show any music for some reason, but if you hit the play button, it will actually start at that first track which is what we want. Now again, I wasn't able to get the USB stick working, but this is a way you can incorporate your music into the built-in SD card. And that's pretty much it. Let me know down in the comment section below if you have any issues with this, other than anything I've stated that we cannot fix at the time, since this is less of a hardware issue and more of a software issue. But let me know down in the comment section below what you think. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one.